Welcome to the France 24 debate. 60 years ago today, the accords were signed that ended the Algerian War of Independence. Tonight, we're going to discuss what this means today, where Algeria is going, and how the past is still casting a long shadow on Algeria's relations with its former colonial ruler, France. Our guests for this special debate on Algeria are, in no order of preference, they are all equally good. Todd Shepard, Professor of History at Johns Hopkins University. Todd, thank you very much for being with us. On the other side of our plateau, Miriam Belkaid, Assistant Professor at Bowdoin University. Thanks for being with us, Miriam. Thank you for having me. André de Boussy is a former French diplomat. Great to see you, sir. And last, and definitely not least, someone I'm proud to describe as a colleague, Dorothy Kellu, journalist, researcher and specialist on Algerian affairs. Great to see you here in the studio at last. Mm -hmm. Before we let these people loose on Algeria, let's take a look at the historical context to really frame this debate. Talks to end the eight-year war in Algeria came after months of secret negotiations. Terrorist attacks in Algiers and Paris early 1962 convinced the last hesitant officials to get on board. On March 7, 1962, representatives from the French government and the National Liberation Front came together in Evian, with mainly two sticking points, the future of French nationals wishing to remain in Algeria, which was not resolved in the agreement, and who would control the Algerian Sahara. France managed to remain in charge for several years in that region, strategic for the oil industry and the development of nuclear weapons. The Evian agreements were signed on the 18th of March. A ceasefire took effect the next day. The measures have been adopted so that the people can control their own destiny. But the fighting continued for several months, with attacks carried out by the OAS, made of mainly former French soldiers opposed to Algeria's independence, and by the Algerian National Liberation Front. No matter the situation on the ground, Algeria's journey to independence was in motion. The French and Algerians backed the principle in referendums. But on the day that independence was due to become official, European and pro-French Algerians were massacred in Oran. Terrified of facing new massacres, the Europeans fled Algeria. They were joined by some 10,000 Harkis, Algerians who fought alongside the French. The Harkis who remained in their home country were targeted repeatedly. Those repatriated, whether French or of Algerian descent, remain scarred by the killings until today. Shirley Sipon's report, they're giving us a framework as to what's happened. Let's bring the guests for some initial comments about uh, where Algeria is now. And uh, Miriam, can I start with you uh, to get a sense of, of what you feel uh, has been, I think it's fair to say, over the past 60 years, a very painful at times journey for Algeria? Well, after the independence, I think there were many challenges and actually the period right after the Accords was very challenging and uh, the transition uh, al also tells us a lot about what Algeria had to face. And uh, before, after the Accords, one of the chairman of the provisional government of Algeria, uh, Abdurrahman Fares, actually said that the Accords were uh, a political pragmatism, a model of political pragmatism, because when he started to deal with uh, with what happening, what was happening in Algeria from April to July, after, when the independence was uh, official, uh, the challenges were humongous and huge, like really uh, very difficult to deal with. And I think uh, the, this transition uh, that actually uh, was supposed to be the, um, the beginning of a new era for uh, a democratic uh, country uh, was actually um, hindered by the choices made after the independence uh, to actually not have a democratic system uh, and to, uh, in a way, uh, put some obstacles uh, for the building of uh, a nation uh, with um, after, uh, according to democratic uh, principles. So, so that is obviously a big issue, but the actual war brought up so many other problems, did it, in terms of how the things that committed, the atrocities that committed, the problems that that raised, the lack of a truth and reconciliation process afterwards, which kind of really has dogged 
the six decades since those mm -hmm. accords were signed, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Absolutely. Well, I would say that actually uh, Algeria has made the Algerian state, Algerian historians, uh, the civil society, intellectuals, uh, during these 60 years, tried to uh, build a narrative. And you have different discourse. You have the official one uh, that is... Uh, in a way um, was built by the FLN and the system and had a very, let's say, biased maybe uh, version or maybe a mythologized uh, version of what happened during the war. Uh, and then you had also actors that were silenced during the war and had to try to find uh, a way to express uh, their views and what happened to them. Uh, you had also historians trying to give a nuanced uh, um, version of the facts. Uh, historians like Mohammed Harbi, right from the beginning, tried to uh, build this narrative in a um, logical and nuanced way. And you have also the cinema literature who contributed in this building. But you're right, uh, a lot of uh, obstacles um, uh, kept uh, the Algerian society to build, let's say, um, a, a narrative that would help uh, in having um, a peaceful uh, understanding of what happened in the past and also including a lot of actors. I think there was uh, this idea um, that the FLN started the war in 1954, uh, mm -hmm. and then this um, uh, this actor, in a way, hijacked, uh, I would say, the narrative. Uh, but uh, right, rightfully so, we have to uh, admit that they they it's the the political force and organization that led Algeria to the independence. But there was other sides that were left apart. Can I bring in you uh, as a diplomat, so <laughs> Mr. Uh, Debussy, André Debussy, former French diplomat? France's handling of the whole affair, it, from the outside, to me, it, it seems that it didn't help in any way. Is that fair to say that France's attitude, France's stance, actually sort of piled on more problems? Yeah, I, I would speak rather as a as a. French born uh, in Algeria rather than the diplomat because it's okay. where I was raised and uh, I grew. Um, it looks like uh, from the past 20 years successive governments on the French side have tried to uh, make a step towards the uh, reconciliation as you, as you mentioned it with Algeria present government, which is obviously the same government since 1962, they are the same people, same force, military essentially, uh, but they have tried in, on a number of occasions uh, to uh, put some uh, efforts in a museum, the Stora, uh, the, the last Stora report, but um, I cannot hear very much uh, responses on the other side. You mentioned that the civil society is probably active, uh, university uh, uh, journalists and so forth and so on. We cannot see much uh, 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 response from the Algerian government. Uh, there are lots of criticism uh, and they're expecting probably the fr from the French government, this one and the previous one, uh, to, um, to make uh, um, a plea uh, of guilt. And this is not a way to reconcile two nations. Can I just uh, add to this uh, last October, Emmanuel Macron's words stoking tensions be be between France and Algeria. I think it's fair to say the French president made a remark, which is quoted in Le Monde. Uh, he said that Algeria's post-independence political military system has totally rewritten the country's history. Uh, Macron telling descendants of the Algeria War of Independence that the history transmitted to Algerians was not based on truths but on a discourse of hatred towards France. This remark mm -hmm. came after France announced it would slash the number of visas granted to Algerians by half, and as a result, um, Algeria recalling its ambassador to France. Not the kind of gesture that makes for good relations, Dorothy. Yes, indeed. I actually, I was uh, willing to respond mm -hmm. to Go ahead. this idea of, you know, uh, an Algerian uh, military regime and, and dictatorship. And I think it's the very reason why my own father left Algeria and was not able to work as an artist and filmmaker there. Um, and I think um, as a generation born in, in France, we very much suffered from 
uh, this political system and uh, that is also in some way uh, not helping in accessing our own history and, and memories from uh, the colonial period. And actually I had to go to the US, not in France. Uh, so France is also problematic in, in, in this matter, but I had to, to exile myself in some ways and study abroad to be able to have access to my own history between France and Algeria. So it says a lot about how uh, to this day it's still very difficult to, um, to decipher and understand what happened and how it impacted. Is, is that the fault of France? Is that the fault of Algeria? Is that the fault of both countries? Is that what the, what the problem is? And does that fault echo in every aspect of their relations? Is that the case, do you think? Uh, that's a very uh, broad question, I would say. Like, I would need a, a PhD dissertation to answer <laughs> that. Uh, but I would say that, um, yeah, we, we should look at, the, for example, the amnesty laws uh, in '66 after the war. And it's a way um, they were adopted in France and organizing in some ways the, the forgetfulness. And, um, and I think, um, you know, we're 60 years after, I'm part of a new generation researching, asking, um, you know, making so, many, so much efforts to understand. And so many years after, we're still suffering uh, from it. So I think like uh, nowadays, I think, of course, we can uh, witness that on the Algerian part, they are not very ready to uh, open files and, and very much cooperate. Uh, in France, there is like, I would say new steps, um, making us maybe hope that uh, funds will be there for researchers, for artists, uh, but it's still like a bit too slow, according to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we had Macron's remarks uh, in October, cut to December then. Um, the French Foreign Minister Jean-Luc Le Drian making a visit to Algiers aimed at easing diplomatic tensions. Um, addressing journalists after meeting with the president, Tebboune, uh, Adrian is saying Algeria was essential as a partner for France, hoping the two countries will return to a path of peaceful relationship and look to the future. So, December last year, then the French Foreign Minister making those uh, statements. Uh, Todd, this looking to the future, how can they look to the future if they can't resolve the past? Right, and the past is an incredibly important frame here. Uh, let's remember, first of all, 1962, this moment here is is in many ways a miracle. Uh, the Algerian people, led by the FLN, not all the Algerian people, but a lot of Algerian people directly suffered intensely. Uh, let's remember as well that this was an absolutely poverty-stricken country. Okay? People were living, more than 50% of people, according to French analyses in the beginning of the war, had almost no access to money at all. Uh, 70 to 80% of people were living in such deep poverty that they barely had enough to eat. These were French citizens living in what supposedly was, according to law, part of the French Republic. Uh, and the FLN came out of nowhere uh, with a short history behind it, but a new organization uh, and defeated one of the biggest military powers, one of the biggest economic powers in the world, uh, France. Defeated them. They won the war and the French lost the war on the terms that the FLN set, which were not just military, but all sorts of different ways. And then the French did everything to make sure it would go poorly. Uh, between May 19th, or between March 19th and July 2nd, when the French recognized Algerian sovereignty finally, they wouldn't let, and that, there are specific instructions from Charles de Gaulle, the president of the Republic at the time, saying, let them do nothing that suggests that any FLN official or anyone associated with the FLN exercises sovereignty in Algeria at all. So they were given no access Leaders of the FLN were given no access at all or their officials on the ground. And then the massive departure, the kind of evacuation by choice by the people, by the so-called Pienois, the Europeans, the Jews of Algeria in large, large numbers. But it completely destroyed all of the people that had direct, almost all of the people. And this is a French history here of who they put in, who they gave the education to, who they put in positions of authority, who they gave power to at the lowest level of the civil service, almost all of them left. So you had a complete destruction of the very basis of a state. You have everything done to prevent the FLN, which was a war machine that had set its efforts and sights on being a state from actually establishing a state until the last moment. Uh, July 5th was mentioned. You know, Oran was the site of OAS violence massively from February 1962 
through July. On July 5th, tragic events on the day of actual Algerian independence, its declaration, more Algerians died in, Al in Algiers during those events than Europeans did. Okay, so this just, and then we're talking about the setting up of a state and a nation coming together after 132 years of an absolutely brutal form of colonization. In 1954, the United Nations identified Algeria as the world, the territory in the entire world that had the lowest level of literacy. In, anywhere in the entire world. <laughs> That's the French Republican model in practice in Algeria. So they're trying to set up a new country, a new state, with no access to the levers of power until the last possible minute, dealing with as well liberation, trying to get out of the colonial situation. So yes, then you get set up in place a system that is deeply problematic, a vision of the past that is deeply problematic, very similar to many other colonies, former colonies that were setting themselves out in this path at that moment. But here with an intense fixation between France and Algeria that is far beyond, certainly any former French colony, but almost any other former Western colony that gained liberation in this period. And so that intense French obsession with Algeria has meant that you get people like Macron making these ridiculous statements in December about the Algerian people, making just wide, quite insulting, non-diplomatic claims about an Algerian government that I have a lot of things to say, uh, for, and very few of them are going to be, are, would be positive, but I'm not the leader of a country that's supposedly negotiating with them. And then a complete failure of recognition under this pretense of self-flagellation, of you know, demanding pardon is not okay, of just recognizing the facts of what Algeria suffered and what Algerians suffered, which was massive through a long, long time, and particularly at the war's end. Indeed. So Francois Hollande nearly apologised. Macron, I'm not sure whether he has or yet, but he's apparently opened the National Archives uh, on the Algeria war. That was some three months ago. The president uh, did so with words that many Algerians never imagined they'd hear from a leader of France. Macron saying France needed to face up to things it did wrong during the War of Independence and since. And later in January this year, he recognised the wrongs done by France to Algerians who fought on their side. The so-called Archies. Let's listen to Macron. 60 years ago, those repatriated from Algeria were not listened to. 60 years ago, they were not received with the affection that every French citizen in distress deserves. 60 years ago, plights continued for some and began for others. Memories I have partly recalled today. A speech does not resolve 60 years of injustice, and words are sometimes of little use. But I wanted these few words today to bring recognition to the plights that the Republic has never spoken about. Well, to take the words that Dorothy said, but I put a question to her earlier on, you need to do a PhD on all of those things. I think that Macron was talking about trying to get anywhere near the truth and the feeling and the strength and depth of what people think about what's happened. So, Dorothy, thank you for giving me that, that image. <laughs> um, and can I just say to all four of you, I mean, feel free to chip in at any point to, to make your point and talk about things. Don't be driven by me. Um, André de Boussy, I'm coming to you. We've just heard from President Macron, but I know you've got things you want to say, so... The floor is yours. No, I, I wanted to add something with Go ahead. Uh, Todd said. Um, it's right that we, we came to a time where colonization wasn't in, in, in the air. So De Gaulle had no choice but to pull out gradually from a, a number of countries. Where I want to make a point is the, the Accord d'Evian 1962 failed in many ways to address the fate of the people Algerian, French, Pied Noir, and Arki. They failed. And uh, uh, it, it, is, it will be a misconception to uh, say that the uh, French were treated superiorly to the Algerians. The million French came back to, uh, to France where by a vast majority, employees, uh, nurses, uh, doctors, etc., and so forth and so on. And just to remind people, yeah. maybe watching in countries that have nothing to do with this story at all, because there'll be many people in the States, it, I come from the UK, sure. many people there who don't realise yeah. that, you know, that was actually part of France and French people were there, and like yourself, yeah. you were brought up there and, and 
and, you know, and they had totally lived French. For, for, for sure. Most of them had lived like 130 years or less. My family was there for probably a good uh, century. So it was their country. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when they came back to France, France was the mother country, but they, it was a, a foreign country as well. So the, we have to remember that the French population suffered as much as the Algerian population and added to this uh, tragedy where the fate of the Archie, uh, which were badly treated, like uh, most uh, countries at war, like Afghanistan dealt with the uh, suppletive of the, uh, of the army. And unfortunately, all those things were not properly treated in 1962 in the Accord de Vian. And I agree with you that there was, there was some underdevelopment of the country. Nevertheless, France established a number of infrastructures uh, health, education, transports, roads, etc., etc., which is still there to, to the day. I'm, I'm not saying that there were not some uh, some uh, uh, mis misdevelopment of the population at large, but they did leave a country which was uh, uh, bankrupt and ruined. They did, right, you're right, they did leave a country that was bankrupt and ruined. Uh, you know, Germaine Tillon, the important resistant fighter, uh, now in the Pantheon, she talked uh, about the clochardisation, the utter impoverishment that took place in Algeria between the 1930s and the 1950s when she returned there. And so it is true that the people that left Algeria in 1962 suffered enormously. Uh, and particularly that more than half of the European civilians who died during the war, died in 1962, more than half. So for them, it was the most violent period of the war. Now, on every single day of that of 1962, more Algerians were killed by French violence than that was the case, right? And it was the French government that decided to treat the repatriates the way they did. It was the French government that embedded that status. It was the French government that did put into place the Abbey Accords are full of, you heard this in the report, full of measures that with, delayed it for months as the French government tried to do everything to keep the Europeans in Algeria. They didn't want them to come back. They didn't prepare for it. They're the ones that stripped the Alki of their right to return automatically. They're the ones that treated the Alki horribly on their return. Of course, Algerians did too, but this was a war. So there was tension. And what, the, what certain Algerians did to certain other Algerians is, is tragic. It doesn't at all rise to the level of what the French state did to its own citizens who denied them, in many cases, access to getting back to France, that put them in camps. Now we're talking about the Alki, mm -hmm. those group, those Algerians who fought on, or at least were assumed to were identified as having fought You'd on think the they'd side. be brought back and they'd be helped and praised, but in fact they were chucked into effectively concentration camps. They were stripped of their even right to come back. They were told you have to prove that you're a French citizen when they were born with French citizenship <laughs> and they had fought on the French side. And can, I just, can I just interrupt, Todd? France. One of the things that shocked me when I first came to France, I, was, I came here thinking it was a republic, everybody was equal, and I'd, I'd sort of bought into all of that. It was 1984, long, long time ago, you know? And I'm stood at uh, the uh, prefecture in Nanterre trying to get my carte de séjour to stay in the country for a year and I'm the one person there who wasn't from Algeria and there was about there was about a thousand people and a CRS man came out with a gun and he said everyone from Algeria go away and come back tomorrow and they just left and I just walked in and I was shocked and I said to him what was that I said I don't care they're from Algeria mm -hmm. now that's what he said now I'm not sort of you know taking sides but that struck me as very unfair why has this attitude Miriam can I bring you on this one Miriam why is this attitude continued why this bitterness? Why this well, horrible sort of feeling between the two groups? Yes, well, there is a lot of things to, to unfold here. And yeah. I think the debate is already like saying a lot about this idea of reconciliation that actually, as Todd was saying, it was a war. Mm. And in every war, you have a winner and a loser. Mm. And it doesn't heal very quickly. There are also traumas that take time to even realize and even put into words to be able to express the traumas from both sides. So it takes time. But I am from like one of the people that thinks that actually this idea that is repeated, this belief or this, you know, uh, mantra that we hear on and on, in, on on the media and from political, you know, actors that actually a reconciliation is necessary seems to me a kind of a, a false uh, hope. Uh, it, it seems to me like completely not really the right question to ask. I think that what we are seeing in this discussion that actually each society and each country has uh, a work of history to do. We have a historian here with us. Uh, 
actually to uh, write uh, the history as it happened, as, let's say, as close to truth as possible. You know, it's always a, a challenge. But this idea that we will have a pied noir or a Harki or an Algerian, I was born after the independence, it feels for, for me a little bit uh, an illusion to think that my perception or my way of thinking or my pride of being, my pride of being uh, Algerian and independent would reconcile with other other narrative. It doesn't mean that we have to fight or there is like impossible dialogue, but it doesn't seem for me the, the, the most important thing to achieve. What needs to be achieved is a work of history. And knowing also that actually even history has its limits and we will always have uh, historians who will be revisionist, others who will be uh, nationalist, but that's the effort we, that we need to do. And when, uh, to go back to what we were saying about Macron and what and even from the Algerian side, we always have, since 1962, this kind of spectacular moment of uh, kind of, you know, a war of words between the two states or the two regimes. But actually, when you think about it, economically, France is a major investor in Algeria. France has huge um, uh, interest in Algeria. And actually, on that side, everything seems to be okay, uh, whatever... Macron says, uh, you know, in December or September or whatever, Taboon answers. So let's not get, you know, just not let us not be influenced or manipulated by this spectacular that the media or, you know, like kind of like, oh, Macron said that and Taboon didn't answer or whatever. Because uh, in reality, what the, one of the challenges is that France has a work to do. Uh, it ha There is a uh, uh, memories that are in competition in France. Yeah, there are different groups that don't feel or don't have the same narrative. Uh, in Algeria too, there are some groups that has been silenced or didn't find the, let's say that silence in the public space, because I think in families, in homes, people uh, constantly speak about the past, but let's say that the political regime doesn't allow always um, for some groups, I'm thinking about the MNA, the other nationalist movement, or, you know, the Communist Party that was also uh, kind of ripped from uh, some of uh, what they did during the, uh, the Algerian War or during the, the, the Algerian War of Independence. But so both societies had challenges and the only way to deal with them is history. A work of history. I am a, also a true believer in arts, in cinema, in literature, and all the things that we are saying actually has been uh, when you look at the cinematographic production in Algeria, but also in France, all these things that the journalists like to call taboos or uh, things that actually are not allowed to be told are actually addressed by a lot of authors, a lot of uh, um, filmmakers, documentary makers that are doing this effort and don't really pay that much attention to the official discourse or at least try to nuance it or to bring other sides to the, to the history. So I'm thinking about, you know, for in Algerian cinema, it always like there is this caricature of saying, oh, the Algerian cinema is nationalist. But actually, when you look at the films in the last years, you have a lot of things that were supposed to be taboo that are addressed. And the, the other belief for French cinema is to say that, oh, France never represent this war, which is actually completely untrue. You have a lot of production. So I think there are different levels here to unfold the memory, the representation and history. And we have to be careful uh, what we are talking about and who, what actor we are actually um, um, identifying when we say there is still some work to do. Indeed, and I'm privileged as a journalist to be able to ask you those questions and to give you the time to answer it. Thank so you. thank you so much. <laughs> it brings us nicely to you. Go ahead. Please, Dorothy, <laughs> yeah. go ahead. Actually, yeah, because I feel like um, I really want to respond. First of all, like growing up in France, um, I grew up with this idea of uh, France bringing uh, civilization to Algeria. Mm. That's what I, I heard, um, I learned at school, and it was really um, striking for me when I actually um, excavated my own family history and, and discovered the, the, the story and the history of the uprootedness, massive up uprootedness of Algerian civilians during the War of Independence. Uh, the French military displaced forcibly civilians and put them in camps under uh, French military surveillance to cut them off from uh, the FLN fighters. 
and more than two millions were displaced. Um, this is a, a history that, for me, is very important to understand nowadays Algeria and the rural uh, Algeria that we, we see today that is uh, in many places like former camps that have become uh, cities. Um, and yes, I've heard um, actually about the prudiness of, of European uh, pied noir, who, but I was really like, um, in a way, shocked emotionally to find out about the prudiness of Algerian civilians that were uh, silenced. And of course, there have been like uh, some important uh, books like by Bourdieu and Sayad on uh, prudiness. But um, to this day, I feel like there is still a competing narrative and, and a dominating narrative, at least in France, uh, where I live. And we very much struggle to, to exist, you know, and, and tell our own stories. How conflicted do you feel? Because I'm sensing what you're saying. There is a confliction about the Algerian side, the French side. How conflicted do you feel? Yeah, I feel, you know, like all these voices that um, actually my film is trying to um, uh, unsilenced mm. <laughs> after having been silenced, giving them some space to exist. And I'm very surprised when, you know, I, I, I have like screenings and I have the young generation coming to me and be like, you know what, I think my grandfather, this is what he went through, or my my, my father or my mother, and and they are very disturbed, you know. And and I feel that um, we have very um, a very good access to the uprootedness of European, uh, actually, uh, pied noir, um, but not to, to other parts of the Algerian history, at least in France, uh, in what we, we are taught and, and what is discussed in the media and in films. Um, so I think it's very important for also um, the integration of the, of the you know, society and, and, and that we feel we have a, a space to exist with our own you know, memories and, and that our history becomes part of the national narrative and is not uh, silent or considered un, unimportant. So that was what you were saying, Mary. The truth has to, the truth has to be stated. The truth yeah. has to be written. Uh it has to be written and also we have to be aware of the complexity of the situation. In France there is a, an obsession, there is a memory of the war as if nothing was the, happened before, as if everything started in 1954 mm. and we said like kind of this uh, rela the very complex uh, relationship with the FLN that ac actually is not recognized as a partner during the accords. They are not, you know, the, 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 the provisional government is not uh, recognized by French authorities. That's what will lead to a lot of difficulties that Todd mentioned before. So there is this idea that everything started in 1954. Unfortunately, in Algeria too, there is this uh, uh, over... Um, you know, this uh, narrative that kind of makes makes it the fundamental, foundational moment for the Algerian nation. But we don't have to, we have to remember that there is also a colonial memory. It started in 1830. Uh, it's a, a century long, a century and 30 years of uh, dispossession, a uh, population that were displaced, killed. Uh, the conquest was one of the uh, most violent. It, it, it uh, was for uh, years, more than four, 50 years. It's not, it's not like just details. It's very important. And if we don't understand that, uh, it's just like as if what Dorothy was saying, it's just we, 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 the narrative in France is like as if a war started and it ended in 1962. It's very much more complex than that. And also, I would say, when, even when we focus on the, the memory of the Algerian war and we don't talk about the colonial memory, it's also kind of denying that France ha actually had an empire. And, you know, it's when Algeria is taught in, in high schools in, in France, in the, the textbooks, it's a war that led to the end of the Fourth Republic. It's mentioned in the decolonization. I think there is much more to do to recognize, to talk about this period before. For, so for, the, for French and for, for the French society to just deal with this past, recognize it, understand it uh, in all what it unfolds. And that is, in my opinion, uh, very important for the, the French society. Mary mentioned French investment being important. I need to move on to sort of see how we can re realise the potential of Algeria, if that's OK. Oh, yeah. Do you have a thought on that, Todd? Because obviously, Mary was mentioned about the idea of, you know, sort of French investment is coming in. There are positive things coming from France. Clearly, that going forward has to be something that is Oil an essential partnership. partnership. 
surely. <laughs> there, uh, there's an enormous desire. There, there's an incredibly well-educated population in Algeria. There's amazing things happening among Algerian people, and there's unfortunately a really stuck uh, political system. Uh, unfortunately, too, uh, not just France, my own country, the United States, uh, have been done a lot to keep it stuck. Uh, we want to remember that you know, President Macron went to the, came out of the hospital room with former President Bouteflika and said he'd learned all sorts of important insights from a man who was probably in a coma at the time that he was visiting him or barely out of it, because uh, they've, the United States, France, et cetera, has been deeply committed to keeping the Algerian armed forces and the government that is controls them, but is in deep kind of dialogue with their armed forces, the most powerful army in North Africa, in Africa, uh, an absolutely crucial element of the anti-terrorism campaigns of the United States and France and other countries, the Sahara, uh, et cetera. We talked, we mentioned the Sahara before. So there's a lot of things that are keeping this government in place. It's certainly supported and recognized by countries now, we know Russia, uh, as well as the United States, all have interest there, as does France too. But there's so much that could happen in Algeria. It's such a rich country. It's part of what makes people so frustrated. Uh, so many people in France of Algerian origin and so many people in Algeria who know that their country could be incredibly successful, it has so much to offer, and the people are so successful. I mean, doctors from Algeria are going everywhere. They're wanted everywhere. They're incredibly well trained. Uh, so. If, if the system would let them do more, that would be great. Uh, it's true that the French system is caught up in kind of using Algeria as a political football. It's too bad. Uh, you know, I certainly, you, there's so many people in Algeria who speak French uh, and or have, even if they don't think they do, uh, they, they know it, they listen to it, and they're, they constantly get told by French politicians that they are not welcome, that they don't think very much of them whenever it serves them. Uh, so France could really draw Algerians in if they wanted to. That is popularity in France, but connections between France and Algeria also. Like, Algerian kids can't leave their country because they can't get a visa anywhere. <laughs> Yesterday, I mean, Macron just announced his presidential program, and he's put into writing now that he's going to dramatically reduce the number, he's continue the policy of dramatically reducing the number of visas offered to Algerians to punish the Algerians for not being part of this crime-fighting connection, trying to connect you know, immigration and criminality, which is a kind of French ongoing discussion. Sure. Uh, and so this is going to continue to make it more difficult for people from Algeria to leave. And it's again, it's not just France. It's very difficult for people from North Africa to just go visit other countries. They want to. They want to come back. Many of them, too. They love their country. Uh, so it's just it's been shut off. And it's too bad, too, that the government is doing not very much to help it within. Uh, but Tom, thank you very much indeed. We need to leave it there. I wish we could do five programs about this and maybe Dorothy one day will make a series of documentaries that we will show on this channel to really get into the, the full nature of what this is about. Because I think we've just really just scratched the surface tonight, but at least we've tried to do something on it. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you to Todd Shepard of Johns Hopkins University and Miriam Belgaid from Bowdoin University. Thank you very much indeed. Andre Debussy, former French diplomat who was raised in Algeria. Thank you for your thoughts and insights, sir. Great to meet you. And thank you to Dorothy Kelly, journalist researcher, specialist on Algerian affairs, and I hope soon to be director of uh, several documentaries, which we will show on this channel about this uh, very issue, because there is so much to talk about about Algeria. Fascinating stuff. Thank you all, and thanks to you all for watching too. Stay with us. Uh, more to come here, of course, on France 24.